Hey guys, it's your boy Chili here, coming at you from, uh, from my, from my living room. Yeah. Uh, so we got a little bit of a different kind of video for you today. What do we got? Well, yeah, as you might know, your boy Chili is gonna be a daddy. And, uh, what do babies like? Milk? They like milk? Crying? They also like moisture, apparently. They like it moist. Uh, so... We got this bad boy here. It's uh, it's actually a air purifier, HEPA filter kind of deal. Check it out. Oh, sexy. So you can see here it says uh, clearly it says humidification here. So we got it's got a little bit of a humidifier feature built in to the air purifier. That's dope, right? What else? Well, let's take a look at uh, where the water goes in. It's right here, the reservoir. Let's open this bad boy up. Let's take a look. Hmm. This big, this big boy here. It's a small boy here. And that's the problem. Because a small boy means that you gotta fill this small boy all the freaking time. And we don't like that. We don't wanna fill the small boy all the time. Uh, we like to fill it every now and then, and then it kinda just does its thing and leaves us the frick alone. You know what I'm saying? So, Chili thought there must be an easier way. And that's what our project is going to be here. Probably going to do this in a few videos. But I'm going to be doing a little bit of an embedded uh, design thing. Control system. We're going to have a microcontroller. This tank here, this bad boy right here, is going to hold all of our excess water. And I'm going to have a hose running from this into here. Of course, you can't just run a hose from here to here because it'll flood my whole freaking floor. So... We got to have a valve and we got to have a way of detecting when to open the valve and when to close the valve. So we're going to have a sensor and a valve, microcontroller to control it all, power supply. It's going to be a good time. Uh, so I probably in the next video or maybe I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I'm just taking this video with my phone, but I might edit stuff together into this video. I might put something in another video. But either way, you're going to see some engineering, and it is going to be epic. So enjoy that, and uh, yeah, I'll see you soon. All right, so let's take a look at the brains of the operation here. We got this uh, PIC microcontroller. It's uh, an upper-grade 8-bit PIC, uh, 18F4550, I believe. And uh, this is actually a leftover from another project. If I were to buy a new part specifically for this project, I think I'd probably go with like something like, a, I don't know, like a Raspberry Pi Pico or something like that. I don't know. But I had these picks. I got like three of these lying around. So I figured I might as well use these bad boys. They're a little weird for this project. This part is actually... Um, it, it supports USB, that's its thing. So it has online circuitry for a uh, for USB bus connection. And, uh, I mean, that's cool, but it's not useful for this project. But it doesn't matter. I just need a microcontroller, and this pick is going to do the job. We got here uh, linear regulator 7805, I believe it's called. So that's going to be supplying the voltage. Yeah, so check this out. I got this... Um, this goes to a power supply that used to go to an old ass laptop. And I, yeah, I repurposed that. It's 19 volts, 3 amps around. So it'll be plenty for what we need. Uh, well, not that plenty. We actually need quite a bit of current sourcing power. We'll talk about that later. But yeah, I got this thing and I actually tore the laptop apart just to get this connector for the power supply. So it died for a very... Uh, a very minuscule purpose but anyways we got 19 volts we're stepping that down to 5 for the microcontroller uh, with this linear guy so it's not that efficient but this isn't going to be sucking that much power so it doesn't really matter in the end uh, yeah and I've got this thing programmed with a very simple program all it does is on one of the one of the data ports it reads the state from the switch and it uses that to output on another data port to control this lead so if I push the button yeah you see we get the we get the lead there's actually some other stuff in here um let me see I'll show you this is the IDE that we use to program the pika the pick 
And uh, yeah, so in here I've got some pulse width modulation stuff. And I was actually playing around, I had a, uh, a uh, what do you call it? What do you call those things? It starts with a P, piezo. I had a piezo buzzer hooked up to this. And I had some PWM and I was making it do noises. And that was cool, but um, I don't know if I'll use it in the project. If I, if I decide that I need to alert the user about some stuff, then I will include the piezo buzzer. But yeah, pick, power, uh, the regulator, power supply. Well, you, the, you don't see the block, it's on the floor, but you, you get the idea. You've seen a power supply block for a laptop before, I'm sure. And, uh, yeah, this is the programmer that I'm going to be using. The Picket 3. Old boy got this one. It was, they used to be selling these for pretty cheap, but I think they discontinued them. And people are pissed, because now the only options are more expensive. But it's pretty cool. It does programming. It does in-circuit debugging. Uh, so I'll be using this bad boy. This is the board that comes with it. I... I I shortly considered just using this board in the project itself, but I decided against it. I like to have this board around as a, as a kind of like a reference when I'm making sure that my setup is correct for the programmer. Because I don't want to be trying my programmer testing it out on a circuit that I've built, because I might have screwed something up on the circuit. And I like to have a nice reference board to test out the programmer and all the software setup. And then I can try to get it working on my actual design. The final project won't be uh, on this breadboard here. This is just prototyping. Uh, I'll have, uh, I have, this is a solder, solderless breadboard. I have a solder full breadboard that I will be transferring the design to when it has been, you know, pretty much finalized. But yeah, that's how things are going for this bad boy.